Well, here we go. Episode 5 of the Hunt and Land Man podcast, Rack Bucks and Real Estate, is brought to you by Southern Ag Credit. Our, you know, our friends at Southern Ag Credit, they help all of our clients finance land, finance tractors and equipment and all the things that us country boys love to use on our properties and we appreciate them as usual. Tonight is a little bit different kind of podcast. Uh, for those of you all watching, we do have three of us here today. We've got Bear Cub, aka Luke is what his mom calls him, Luke Mitchell, and Craig Fitz, uh, Eagle Bull Fitz, uh, formerly of Train Assassin Television and um, pretty much everything in the world. I mean, Craig, Craig's world worldwide. It's hard. It's hard to describe Craig in a couple words. But uh, tonight we're going to do something a, a little different. We've been doing all about land and you know how to buy land, how to finance land, you know picking the spot, that sort of thing. Tonight we're going. We're talking about turkeys. Opening day of turkey season is tomorrow. Tomorrow's the fifteenth. It starts at daylight. And uh, we're going to be filming all week. It's supposed to be a nasty week, but turkey season, I'm going to ask this question everybody, but turkey season, I believe, is everybody's here favorite season. It's um, it's like the night before Christmas and we're eight years old. It really is. We love turkey hunting. When Bear Cup comes down up in a week, we usually always have some success. Not, you know, make sure, hope, hopefully we still do, but uh, it is going to be a nasty week, so... Uh, like I told Bear Cub on camera today, they're just gonna die wet. You know, <laughs> they may not they may not look real pretty when we kill them, but we go and kill them. Well, guys, thank y'all for coming out. Luke, you drove down today. How was the drive? It was all right. Had my wife with me. She made me stop about every 20, 30 minutes. It seemed like, but it's a long trip. Now she's gonna probably listen to this. So watch what you say. I don't. I don't, don't want to get that head busted. I don't either. I don't either. Well, Luke, for y'all that don't know, he lives in I guess you call it Central East Missouri. Is that correct? Yeah, I'll take it. And uh, Luke is a Realtree Land Pro. He's also the producer of uh, Hunt United. He worked with us with Train the Assassin, and uh, we'll do another podcast about how he got his name and who Luke Mitchell is. Tonight is all about the turkeys. Uh, Craig, are you are you pumped up to be on finally on the Hunt Land Man podcast? He he's been waiting on me to ask him to be on here. Now I can't wait to talk on the mic. Well, they they made me uh, borrow a mic. I'm not real happy about that, but. Um, so they talked about being, you know, turkey season being, uh, you know, what we look forward to. But I'm not gonna lie, Luke's gonna lie tonight and say that's what it is. But he's actually a goose hunter, and uh, oh, which is very, very funny to me. So huh? here we go. Oh my! I hunt everything. Anything that has a heartbeat, I'm hunting. I mean, Luke is an AKA killer. I mean, they call him Bear Cub, but I mean that's just because you can't. Hey, see. I know we're. I know this is all about turkeys, but I had three rack bucks down this year before you had one. Just Calling it how it is. We may have to change hey. this episode up to hey. Bear Cub hey. versus Craig. Hey, just saying. Well, uh, thank y'all for coming on. Uh, we're actually the four of us. We've got New Ryan behind the camera as usual, and New Ryan is going to be in severe camera school this week with Bear Cub, and uh, maybe we can learn some stuff from the Eagle Bull right here, Craig Fitz. What well, we're going to be going together this week. Uh, we may divide and conquer for here a lot of turkeys. Luke and I went out this afternoon and um, we uh, were easing around the road, spotted a turkey in the road strutting and actually heard him fly out. So we're going to be 150-ish. The yep. best type, close to the truck. Yeah, it really wasn't far. I mean, we, we weren't 150 yards from the truck and that's about how far we'll be from the turkey in the morning. So super excited about that. The weather's supposed to be kind of nasty. In fact, I heard it rain outside when we pulled up. And so the turkeys may not gobble real good, which was imperative that we get close to one. And, and we know we're going to be close to one at daylight. So even if they don't gobble, we know he's going to be within hearing distance and hopefully we can yelp him on in. Uh, good, good thing y'all brought a good yelper. I mean, what do you feel about our chances? I feel pretty good. I mean, I obviously am not having a gun, so apparently I have to call. Why won't you have a gun? I mean, like, I'm not the first one on the gun. Mm -hmm. So apparently I'm calling because I'm, I'm assuming Bear Cub and New Ryan is, are filming, right? So... I mean, I'll shoot. I I'll guess I'm calling for Slade. Do? Well, Slade called up a turkey a week ago for my son, so I guess it's my turn to return the favor, right? That's right. That's a, that's a good point Craig brought up. So, oh, this was Youth Week this week. It's weird this year. Mississippi decided to start their season on a Monday. I'm sure they had a great reason, but... It was fun, we got to take Wes out of school. The morning started off extremely cold. Dogs barking, turkeys gobbling. It was kind of a little chaos. Typical first morning of the year, you yeah, know, you don't know where all your stuff is. And, but we got that knocked out the way and uh, mid-morning, Craig and I spotted this gobbler and uh, we let him walk off the field. 
called him away from eight hands and he came in I mean he came in running. We got some pretty video at that episode will be up here soon. And uh, so we, we did a little scouting episode combined with uh, Wes's hunt, and that'll be really good. But tonight we really want to talk about, you know, what turkey season means to us. And throughout turkey season, we're going to kind of give you a turkey report because, uh, you know, it's going to be turkey season. That's what we're going to be talking about all day, every day. And, of course, we'll bring in the land and what we can do and improve our land for turkeys and that sort of thing. Well, uh, I'll start off with you, Bear Cub. Tell me, uh, now Craig said you're, you're a goose hunter at heart. What... If you had, if you had to say where turkey hunting lies in your things you love to do, because I know you've done as much turkey hunting with world class hunters and callers as anybody in this room, where does turkey hunting sit on your totem pole? High as it gets. I like killing them all. Like you said earlier, you know that turkey. He went to bed. Uh, he went to bed dry. Eddie Salter, I ran around with him a lot, and uh, he said if they went went to bed dry. They're gonna gobble in the morning, so I think tomorrow morning is gonna be good. But I, you know, traveled the country, hunted turkeys in probably 25, 30 different states, and man, that first gobble, I'm ready to hear it. It just gets me fired up. Oh, you hadn't heard one gobble yet this year. I haven't. Well, good Lord willing, will even I'm gonna tell you, I'm not gonna pass him up if he comes in silent. If you do, I'm I'm going back to Missouri. <laughs> Guarantee you that. Well, uh, Bear Cub and I have killed a lot of turkeys over the last couple of years, and um. We've had a lot of fun, killed a lot of deer, and uh, we all have together. And uh, Craig and I have killed dozens and dozens of turkeys together. Well, Craig, um, I know this, but our listeners may not. Where does turkey hunting, where does it lie on your totem pole? So the funny thing about that question is, you know, if you would have asked me this six years ago, I would have said it was second, second to deer hunting. Uh, but, you know, in the past six years, it has definitely surpassed that. And... I guess the reason is is because of um, like I, I the reason I like it so much above everything is the action that you have right like you know you wake up you know you're not gonna go sit there and not see anything if you're not seeing anything you're moving right you're trying to find them that's the way we hunt anyway uh, which is a running gun style and I become you know I, I just started liking that a lot more uh, so yes it's definitely number one it's what I look forward to the most now don't get me wrong hunting a rut in whitetail season is pretty hard to beat, but an overall census is going to be definitely turkey hunting on top. Well, we apologize if y'all hear a little uh, static in the mic when Craig and I talk. We're balling on the budget here at the Hunting Landman podcast, so we have not got our other two mics yet, so we're still, uh, me and Craig are trading mics. But, um, you know, something I didn't mention, we're, we're getting into the turkey hunting a little fast, something I didn't mention, mention Craig is also a real tree land pro, so I've got Barry Cub, New Real Tree Land Pro. We're going to have a whole podcast about all that one day. He's doing real good. Uh, you can, if you're listening in the Missouri Midwest area, Bear Cup can hook you up. And I promise you, he knows a lot about land and whitetails. And the reason is because I taught him everything he knows. So, I mean, I, I know that he's listened to me on the phone on hunting trips enough that he, that he knows a lot. Craig just got his license also, and uh, he's working for us at Southern States Realty. He's working out of a meet and going to... Uh, work a little bit of everywhere, but uh, I know he's excited about that. We're all excited about that. So now everybody in Own Hunt United, uh, of course, Ryan's a Realtree Land Pro, Bear Cub, Craig, we're all Realtree Land Pros, and Ryan, new Ryan behind the camera, dun, 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 pretty soon will be a Realtree Land Pro. He, he, he thinks he's with a bunch of pros right now. Do you think he's right or wrong? Hmm. Well, the, the actual definition of pro is that you have to make money to do it. Um, is the actual definition, so I don't really know how, you know, how, how much of a pro I am, but uh, I guess he is sitting with two of them. So, well, all right, let's talk about this week. Um, you know, uh, we got, speaking of, we got Ryan. Old Ryan couldn't make it. Uh, he actually went and roosted some turkeys this afternoon. Had a pretty interesting thing. Said he said he had a gobbler fly up in the tree he was sitting in. And he was just sitting there, I think he was in street clothes, and the turkey kind of uh, started putting and then flew back over towards the hen. So he's, him and the rooster, his brother's going to be on that turkey in the morning, and uh, you know, there's not two better turkey hunters in the world. So there's a good chance, he said he had 13 hens, so that's the only thing. Working against them, that's 13 things against them. We had eight. Oh, well, that was earlier this week. We actually only saw one hen with our gobbler. I hope there was another gobbler win, so you could kill one too. You know... I mean, you've never killed any of my turkeys. <laughs> How many of my turkeys have you killed? Let's be oh, real. Oh, oh. Give me a real number. 
Ah, uh, it's got to be close to twenty. Dang! If if y'all didn't hear that, twenty, twenty plus. Oh, I forgot. What <laughs> about what about last year? What what did you kill? Last him? year I had a. Uh, Oh, he's got to add it up. Two. I killed two. Of my turkeys? I think so, yeah. Where? So I killed one. Was it last year where I killed one um, on the beach property? I killed that one on the beach two, property. That was two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, you so. were the master guide last year. Mm -hmm. Ryan killed, what, three? Where did I? Mm -hmm. And then I killed one, and then you killed one. Where did I kill one of yours last I killed one for sure. I just can't remember where it was. Not Tatum, not Dixon Creek. I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Maybe you got away with it last year. You filmed Ryan kill one. That's, That's right. That's right. That listing. Well, we've got some uh, cool places we're going to be hunting this week. Uh, Ryan's actually hunting down uh, in the Gillsburg area. Uh, we're going to be hunting up. Um, I've got a new property we're working on. Um, we own 370 acres, and it has a 1,200 acre lease with it. So we're basically hunting 1,600 acres on the Buffalo River. Property's got a lot of birds on it, and uh, that's a property we're improving and going to put on the market uh, sometime probably this year or next year. Really cool property, a lot of game on it, beautiful Buffalo River frontage, so it's a, it's a really cool property there in Wilkeson County. And it's also right down the street from the famous Dixon Creek, and we know that turkeys, that place has got so many turkeys, it's even got three-legged turkeys on it, because Bear Cup killed one last year. No, I mean, fact. I'll tell you this, we, you know, we said we weren't going to touch on land too much on tonight's podcast, but you go show me another property that I can say, you, you know, that, that, that a turkey got, a non-typical three-legged turkey got killed on last well, year. I mean, it'd be hard to beat. I'm going to say this about Dixon Creek real quick. So, since Slade owned it, I have tried to lease it every single year and he wouldn't let me do it. So, now I have come to the conclusion of, I just go. Right, like he just don't like he's, he. Look, he said go, and I say he says it one time, and that's it. Right, you get one, you get permission one time, and that's it. Correct. You got to tell me. Is I, that don't right? know, I don't know how y'all do it down here. Hey, I'm just that, saying, there is any time, anytime I give you permission to hunt in my places without me, turkeys are not included. Oh. <laughs> turkeys are not included. Let's just go with that. But seriously, these guys talk about how much they love turkey hunting. I love turkey hunting. It's it's the only thing. I get up every morning about six. Of course, during turkey season, gotta gotta go a lot earlier than that. By about the third day of the season, my feet will hit the ground three minutes before my alarm goes up. I just love it that much. If if Trump gave me, or well, I guess Biden now, <laughs> if they gave me a, anything I could want, let's say I cured cancer and they gave me anything I wanted, I'd want a trespass card, or I could go anywhere in the country anytime I want with unlimited tags, and I I would you would not find a happier guy. I mean, look. Bezos and them may have billions of dollars, but I'd have a trespass card and we would kill some turkeys. And and y'all could come. I appreciate that. We we got Marine Craig though. Mm. Well, apparently he's dead all for us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're in trouble. Oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> Me calling turkeys is about like Barico calling coyotes. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, uh, we went into um, talking about Wes's hunt, talking about the turkeys. Okay, so. The weather's been kind of nasty this weekend. You know, I didn't hunt any this weekend. Uh, my son Bentley actually just wanted to go fishing, so I took him fishing. Talked to a lot of people, and the turkeys, typical early season, aren't just lighting it on fire. But we haven't had a, a day of great weather in the morning in the past two or three days, so it's, it's hard to gauge that. Um, something I have noticed in the last two days, you may can hear this in my voice, we've got that first two weeks of turkey season pollen blowing in. And if you look on the trees, and we're in southwest Mississippi, Wilkes and Amec County, into the Felicianas in Louisiana, if you look on the trees, we've got a, probably a little more earlier green up mm -hmm. than I would say a week to 10 days. And Bear Cub said it was like when you got to Jackson, the farther south you went, boom, 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 it started blowing up. So, you know, and, and uh, the, I guess the Japanese pear, whatever it is, they're blooming, it seems to be a little bit earlier. So I don't know if that will affect the turkeys. But it does seem to be a lot of turkeys this year. You just year. added two trees together, but we get the point. Whatever. Yeah. The white tree that's not a dogwood that blooms. <laughs> Somebody listen to this, you know, post in the comments what uh, <laughs> what kind of tree that is. It's a Japanese persimmon. That's what it is. So it's like it, there's a Japanese something and then there's the something pear, but it, they don't, it's not together. Bradford pear. That's it. Yep. Whatever. All right. Well, uh, so this week... 
you know, we're going to take all those things in consideration. And, you know, Craig touched on something. You know, we run and gun pretty hard. Uh, there's there's no wrong way to turkey hunt. You watch people on all the Facebook groups and this, people hunting like that. Who cares? Man, if you want to sit and deer hunt one, so be it. Go do it. Me, Uncle I like Rusty to, style. Yeah, I like to get after him. Uncle Rusty taught me how to turkey hunt, and then I always used to tell him, uh, I perfected it, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, this is actually the first turkey season, I posted about this the other day, the first turkey season ever that, after, like Monday when Wes killed, I didn't call Uncle Rusty and tell him about the hunt. Now, he did not hunt last year because of Corona and it had just come out, you know, of course, being older, he was worried about it. Um, but uh, this will be the first season that, that I won't call and tell him what the turkeys are doing in the morning. He won't be texting me like right now and wondering what the turkeys are doing, but He'll be where, there with us in the morning. Maybe we, uh, I think I got some ashes in my yeah, truck. I, 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 may, I may bring this. I may throw a little in, in my gun barrel and send one down. So he can, so he can, <laughs> he, 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 he can do it one more time on one of them big old long beards. But uh, I'm definitely going to uh, remember to bring him with us in the morning. But we're going to be within 200 yards of that turkey in the morning. And I don't know how y'all are, but that, that makes it for me hard to sleep. Uh, you, you know, already broke that comfort zone. You're in there. Oh yeah, we're in there. You know, that's the place we're hunting is extremely ridgy as Bear Cup saw today and we deer hunted it one day this year and he saw. But uh, you know, the, the turkeys don't have to really use the ridges to get around to us and those Wilkinson County Ridge turkeys are, are I always say if you can kill them, you can kill turkeys anywhere. And uh, this isn't terrible ridges, but uh, I think we're gonna be in a really good spot and it looked like you only had one hen, so we don't have a whole lot to compete with, but you never know. Well, how do you feel about our chances, Craig? I, okay, my question is, like, what time is it that it's legal to shoot them off a limb in case you don't come down, you know? Can you yeah. <laughs> But, uh, no, on, the, on a real note, um, hey, I like having one rooster for sure. Uh, the weather is not, I guess, what you call ideal, but if you got one rooster, you kind of know where he's at. At least, like you said, he can hear you. He may not talk, but, again, like Luke said earlier, and Ryan Watson's always said this, too, just like Eddie Salter, if they go to bed and drive, Usually they'll gobble the next morning. Uh, if they go to bed wet, most of the time they won't. But, um, and, and I think, I mean, they're right with that. Oh, I agree. I completely agree. I, I've, I've seen it uh, a lot of times because once they say it, then you start thinking it, right? So if you, you realize that it is actually true. But, um, and it's, it's so funny that, you know, both of us have been around people like that. So, you know, you get like little bitty things that most people don't ever hear, and you just take it for granted that you know it because they, they say it all the time, right? And uh, so I actually feel good. He went to bed dry. He had one hen. We know where he's roosted. I feel pretty good about it. Cup? I feel good. And didn't you say you had him on trail camera too, coming down the road a couple times? I did. I did. Yeah, pretty recently. Now it wasn't. Uh, he had been there a long time. But the the tracks that uh, knew Ryan and I, I scouted that property last week and we got in some press gobbler tracks had it rained that night so we were yeah, they were gobbling but we were walking a gobbler down probably i mean same ridge top so it's probably the same turkey or same group of turkeys i just pulled up the weather channel let me see at daylight 56 percent chance of rain then going to 72 to 78 pretty fast Sweet. eight mile an hour wind so thank god we have one on the limb it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a little interesting in the morning well craig uh i'll start with you on on, on this part um, tell me, you know, I know you've had, we both had our sons involved in turkey hunting and Wes has taken to it a little more than Bentley has. Tell me what, you told me that you, you like turkey hunting because of the running gun and stuff like that, but wh what is the, the one thing, the one thing to you that's like, this is why I like doing it. Is it the drumming? Is it the goblin? Is it, a, is it the, is it doing it with your friends? Because it is a lot mm -hmm. more, you know, you're, you're, you're experiencing with friends a lot more, so... What's the one thing? And you're up next, Cubs, to be thinking. All right, so he says one thing, but I can't say one thing. So uh, the things that get me is, like, I, I do turkey hunt every now and then by myself. Like, last year I had a turkey I was hunting. Everybody knows his name was Barry. And uh, I ended up killing him, and that was fun by myself, right? But at the same time, being with my friends and now with my son being, I mean, he'll tell you, you know. I mean, there's not many things that he is, like, just fired up for besides football and turkey hunting. Literally, he asked me all the time, like, when's turkey season? When are we going turkey hunting? And um, obviously, he was fired about being out of school the other day. But, you know, that makes it fun for me because, and then when he's sitting in my, uh, not on my lap anymore because he weighs 92 pounds, but he was sitting in front of me the other day. And when that turkey came in, I started 
shaking, which made him start getting fired up. And it was so funny because he's killed a few now and he's seen a few. So when he's telling, I'm telling him to hurry up and shoot, hurry up and shoot, hurry up and shoot. And he literally looks at me and he says, Dad, calm down. He's coming closer. And I'm like, man, this is awesome. Like my son's like calming me down, right? But that's what it's about. You know, it was the time together and everybody always laughs because when he shoots one, you know, he doesn't get all fired up like we do. That's just who he is, right? That's how he is. So a lot of people are always like, does he even like it? I'm like, trust me, he likes it. He just shows it completely different. Uh, so, but yeah, that's that's my favorite part is with, being with people, being with my son, the adrenaline when they're 20 yards away from you, uh, not being able to get a shot, get a shot. I love that kind of stuff. Cool. I think my favorite thing is the camaraderie. You know, you give me a hard time about duck and goose hunting and that, but it's a camaraderie, uh, you know, waking up in the mornings and going to Casey General Store or Vines or wherever you, you get you get your biscuit in the morning, you just jump in the truck and you go with your buddies. I mean, that's my favorite thing about it is you don't have to be, you know, the fastest or the tallest or none of that stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, hey, you know, can say what you want. But I'm, what I'm saying is, is like, anybody can go do it. There's not, it doesn't have to be a four-year-old or anything like that. It's, you go out and you go hunt. If he's got one, in my opinion, if he comes in and got one like a man, he's going to die like one. That's, I mean, the way I look at it. I just like the camaraderie. Um, it's like coyote hunting. You, you know. What about the mullet? Do they have to have a mullet? Uh, it does help. It does help. It does help. And I'm, I'm the same way. I love, because, you know, I, I very seldom go turkey hunting by myself. I mean, it's fun every once in a while to go by yourself. But then as soon as you kill one, you call somebody. You know, yeah, I remember last year that when I killed by myself, <clears> I couldn't get riding on the phone fast enough. I was like, Oh man, you should see him. You can't, you know, just all the, all the story behind it. I think my favorite thing. There's two things that that like fire me up about turkey hunting. Of course, everybody loves a gobble. We don't have to mention that. But like, it's really cool to me that the best caller in the woods is not the best turkey hunter. It's to me, it's somebody who can call pretty good. At, yeah. You know, and that out an average caller, but an expert, more uh, expert woodsman. He kills more turkey than the best caller. 100%. It's, it's, and it's crazy. And I've told people this because, you know, we, we've got very fortunate to be able to travel across the world and hunt with a lot of people. And look, I mean, kudos to anybody that turkey hunts anywhere. But I always say, if you can kill turkeys in southwest Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, anywhere down here in south Louisiana, you can't just kill turkeys anywhere. You can kill a bunch of turkeys anywhere. And I'm not, hey look, they've got tur exceptional turkey hunters from Missouri and, and Michigan, wherever, they've got, got them anywhere. They're just, down here, they're so heavily hunted. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's just different. But to me, if you take, I, I, I tell people this all the time, if you take an average caller, but he's an expert marksman, I mean, expert uh, woodsman, he, he, he can kill turkeys anywhere. Uh, you know, and then you can take the opposite you can take a very very good caller but he didn't know land and terrain and thinking like that turkey's thinking it just it just changes the game and and something cool that i've learned is you apply that to all different type of species i've killed caribou and elk and mule deer and and the if you know animals you know animals like you kind of just figure it out okay they're doing this and, and it's pretty cool and i think turkeys you know i always <laughs> say if turkeys could smell you wouldn't you wouldn't kill any of them I mean, you know, and, and as much as I like elk hunting, I think turkey hunting would still have to be on, on, on top for me. I mean, look, elk hunting, it don't hardly get no better, but turkey hunting, it's just unreal. I could go, I saw the other day that, uh, what's it, uh, Jordan with um, Primos, he posted they, they had 92 days left. You know, they started had 92 days, and I, I think I was telling you, Ryan, I could do it. Like, like not if I didn't have the job I have in family, but if it was just old Slade and and, and, and nothing to worry about, I can do it 100 days in a row, no questions asked. I love it that much. And it's, it's, it's cool to have a sport that you really love that much, and, and it never gets old. And the second thing, okay, I talked about the woodsmanship. The second thing, when I see him coming in, like when you've been yelping at him, I'm one, the first, when I see him, it's like something's, every time I'm like, oh, it's like, it, it's like it fires me up every time, just like it was the first time. Which actually the first time I missed my first turkey, and I think that's why I've been mad at them ever since. But uh, well, uh, we're getting. We said we will keep this thing pretty quiet. We're going to post it. Hopefully, get this thing posted up before opening day. And you know, kind of what I wanted this podcast to be the, the night before opening day of turkey season, because you know, there's people 
all throughout the South right now, wherever seasons are open tomorrow, that are they're sitting in their back room scratching on their slate, or they're putting chalk on that box, or they're checking to make sure there's shells. They, I mean, they've got people all across the country, I mean, all, all across Mississippi right now, that they can't hardly sleep tonight. The guys that got them on the limb, I mean, you know, can, can, can think about when you've got one on the limb like that you've actually seen. Like, we, we had one on the limb tonight, but we didn't see him. But I know, like, you go to thinking, okay, and get to that tree but man that's risky and you fight in your sleep all night it's like the the good hunter and the bad hunter on the shoulder man if i get right there he'll pitch too well i got four people going too so that's right <laughs> well, we, <there's, laughs> if we got some rain in the morning i think we can touch the trees in well you know uh, that's coming from a missouri hunter now. yeah missouri hunter here we go anyway uh we're hey, you know y'all can say what you want i killed a three-legged turkey mm -hmm. he did but i yelp him up so i hey i had a call in my mouth <laughs> I'll give you credit. You helped him out. Well, um, the, uh, but in the morning, see, we're always filming. So I'll tell people this. If you've never significantly filmed a lot, you'd cut your turkeys in half because things you can do just to kill him. And then we always, we're not just trying to film him. We're trying to get good video of him. Like, you know, we're going to be backed up in a small logging ramp slash food plot. We've already kind of picked where we want to get. And we want to get really good video. And for us, that's part of the challenge is not only to kill them but to get really good video of kill them and look they all pick on me because i'll video the computer screen and i'll watch our turkey hunts 500 times throughout the years i just love watching our deer come in the same way but uh we said we're gonna keep this thing pretty short so we're gonna get to our favorite question that we ask everybody on the podcast and i'm gonna start with you craig so here's the deal uh you've got a hundred million dollars you win in the lottery, your uncle gives it to you, whatever, I don't care. You get $100 million. This is all about rat bucks and real estate. So we're going to, where are you buying land and and why? You know, why why are you picking the areas you're buying land? And, and, and of course, I know I have an open invite, but uh, tell me where I'm coming. <laughs> all right, I don't have an unorthodox answer to begin with. So the first thing I'm doing is buying a place that... My wife's happy at it. No, I knew it was coming. Because let me tell you, I got a reason why. Let me tell you why. Because I'm after that, well, let me tell you. Because I'm after that, the rest is mine. Right? The rest is what I want. So she's taking 99 million and you get... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to cost 99 million. But anyway, so I thought long and hard about this even before the $100 million question. But so obviously you want something close, right? So you want, you want to me, 1,000, 1,500 acres, you know, prime spot in Mississippi or Louisiana. I'm really not picky about that because I'm, I'm right on the border um, because both states have really good areas right there. And then you're going to move up to the Midwest. And I love Missouri. I just have a special place for hunting in Missouri because of turkeys and deer. And one of my favorite places ever to hunt was in Missouri. Uh, and Bear Cub just sold it. So um, I appreciate that. Anyway, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, so from there, obviously, you know, as far as when it goes for whitetail deer, uh, you cannot beat a place in Iowa. Um, so obviously, I would probably actually move to Iowa for that reason. Um, and then my last place would be a place for good elk hunting because I really, really would like to do that a lot more because I don't get to do that much now. Um, so that was my three things. I thought we got one. No. Wait, I thought the question was what you going to do with $100 million. I can go he's with $100 he's million. got the mic. He can do what he wants. All right. So, it's, wait, you got to buy one piece of property with $100 million? No. Okay. All right. Well, my that's, wife's... That's dumb, by the way, about one piece. Well, I mean, hey. Depends on the piece. Exactly. Well, okay. Hey, my wife's in the other room, and she can come in here, hit me, don't matter. I'm worried about what I'm buying. She can be happy with whatever we come up with. I'm with you, though. I'm going to Iowa. I'd love to move to Iowa. I actually drew a tag last year and killed a great buck up there. And the rolling hills and man, it just the turkeys up there just seem like when they gobble, it it sounds like I don't even they roar. You remember that one I killed the first first time with the muzzle letter? He coming in at the cold that morning. God, dog, they're big old turkeys. It was. I mean, they're high thirty pounds. Thirty pounds. Yeah, they're big turkeys. But I, I mean, I just like the. The DNR and everything that Iowa stands for, and, and when you go up there, like I hunt Missouri and I live up there, and you know, there's a lot of deer, there's a lot of good deer, but in my area, you know, if it's a four year old, 
130, 140 inch deer, you better pull the trigger. In Iowa, when I was up there, I saw a mature deer every set, you know? So that just gets me excited hunting mature deer. And, and uh, I just like the CRP with the rolling hills and the and the hardwoods, and but that's where I'd go. I think instead of picking three places, I'd just spend 100, 100 million just right there. I might buy the whole county. Good God. I know. I tell you what, I will get my license and I will represent yeah. you if that yeah. happens. Okay. And I'll be your caretaker. <sighs> no, no. Not with all the technology. You'd be, I, I might let you. I got, I'll, I'll put enough coverts up and stuff, whatever. I'll, I'll catch you slipping. It'll be all right. As y'all can tell, we have a lot of fun with Bear Cub and camping. We, uh, Y'all y'all ain't heard Ryan, old Ryan picking on him yet. Uh new Ryan is uh you know, he hadn't got any slack tonight. You know, mm -hmm. um I tried. He, he he tried, but he's doing good. He's he's been doing real good and uh he is hopefully gonna I mean he's been going with his paw in law and the Lindsay's turkey hunting a lot. Mm -hmm. That kinda like a lot of his turkey education, so hopefully we can straighten that out. It's tough. It's tough, but I'm hoping we can we can we can get the Lindsay in the, mm. out of him, but we'll see. He ain't been with no lots, huh? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. But man, we're so excited about the opening week of turkey season. So basically Bear Cubs gonna be down here for a week. We're gonna try to knock out two to three episodes of Hunt United. And uh as we usually do, you know, the weather's not gonna cooperate. It's not gonna you know, it's just gonna make it that much sweeter when they come in. So we're going to have a lot of fun this week. I can't wait. Uh, of course, we're going to be selling land all week, midday. I've got a show in tomorrow at 1130 on a big old track of land. So we're going to be we're gonna be working hard all week. But uh, in the mornings and in the afternoons, we're going to be turkey hunting. We're really going to hit hard uh, this first week <coughs> as we hit hard. You know, every week, but when Bear comes down, we try to, we try to uh, knock out a lot. And Ryan's going to also be in camera school. So um, we're going to hopefully get a lot done this week. How do you think? I mean, you, th you think you're going to teach Ryan your oh, knowledge? Well, oh, hey, I got, hold on. Uh, all right, so Slade go. threw the $100 million question out. Oh, he's been oh, thinking. Oh, I got one question for Slade. Here's, <laughs> here's, a, here's a question I got for Slade. What's the over and under for Bear Cub griping about having to be down here and Turkey's not gobbling and Turkey's not doing anything? Well, he already started a little mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> they were like pterodactyls coming down and getting me, man. I'm well, saying, I'm not I, ain't had, I ain't had a mosquito bite me yet. He's like, dude, these, we better have some spray in the morning. Man. He's talking about mosquito hawks. That's what he's seeing. Man, I'm sweet. They like me. We got them. We got them mosquitoes. You can slap and get a band off. I'm telling you, you look like a pterodactyl flying. You know they're really good if you pull the back straps out and <laughs> season them up, really. Dude, you better have a lot of handies. Something. <laughs> Well, uh, we're, we're super excited about this week, and uh, we thank y'all so much for having us on. We wanted to keep this one short. Uh, this is the night before opening day of turkey season. I hope everyone has a great hunt and be safe out there this week. Um, it's not, God, oh, I, I ain't a lot of me just sitting here talking about it. I get chills because in the morning at daylight, I probably won't get to hoot as much as I like to hoot in the morning. Uh, but uh, just because we, we already know where the turkey is, but I'm hoping we hear a lot. I know it's a lot of turkeys on this piece of property, and if we can't find those that'll work, we've got some other ones. Um, in fact, I saw some pictures coming through on my cameras a while ago. I'm gonna have to check them out, hide them from Craig. Got yeah, them nighttime goblins. Yeah, nighttime goblins. They come in, you know, full moon. They come in midnight, right? <laughs> Man, if they started doing that, <laughs> what if they just started? You know, if they started coming in at night, we'd just be in trouble. <laughs> I wouldn't get any sleep. I have to catch him with that one-eyed dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, thank y'all for having us on. Y'all got, got any words of wisdom? Uh, Craig's been over there thinking about, about stuff ever since we talked about the Look, jets and getting a piece of property. The only thing I can think of right now, I'm not kidding y'all, is we need to have a complete podcast about Bear Cub and let us just tell everything. With him on it or off, not on it? Probably. Probably off of it, so he, no, no, on it's even better because he tries to defend it and makes it worse. So yeah, I think it's great. This, y'all, just letting y'all know, this just didn't start. This has happened since the first day Little Bear <laughs> Cub came into our lives up in Illinois on a hunt. And, and the he, respect I get is unbelievable. It really is, it, the respect. None. It, little Barry Cub came, he filmed the 143 inch deer get shot, and uh, it's been. I put my life on the line for you all. And you did a good job, Cub. Did a good job. All right, man. Well, in the morning, at daylight, the turkeys are going to gobble. If you're listening right now, the turkey's going to gobble, or should gobble, about 6.50 to 7 o'clock. So uh, 
We're gonna be meeting if every man wants to come see us, we're gonna meet the vine vines in the morning at six and get a biscuit, huh, Bear Cub? Craig's buying. Okay, Craig's buying. We'll see y'all in the morning, six o'clock. Good luck everybody. We're hitting hunting in the morning.